Welcome to the latest instalment of our regular tips and tricks episode. This week we'll look at a technique for creating wooden panelling or wainscoting. Along the way we'll learn how to combine multiple generators that fit together seamlessly as well as the mysterious delights of using null segments and expressions. Our wooden panelling style is going to have an adjustable height, so we'll be using the A2S generator which is used to create two dimensional arrays. Before we dive in though, it's important to understand a little bit about how the array is built and a few of its limitations. The best way to understand the A2S generator is to think of each row as a separate one dimensional array, each one stacked on top of the other but all essentially independent. This understanding is essential if you want to create geometry to populate an array that is intended to fit together perfectly without leaving any gaps. There are basically two golden rules to consider when modelling or designing styles that work with the A2S generator. The first rule is that segments can be any X length. If each row is a separate one dimensional array that is calculated independently, there's no problem at all with using segments with unequal sizes on the X axis. As you can see, adjacent segments in the same row will simply move along the array to accommodate any size of geometry. Rows above and below remain unaffected and no gaps appear. Rule 2 though is that to avoid gaps, segments should have the same size on the Y axis. And this is the important one. Because the A2S array is a stack of L1S generators, if you use segments with unequal sizes on the Y axis in a row, the overall height of that row is determined by the tallest segment. The rows directly above will be positioned after the tallest segment and if the heights of the segments differ, gaps will appear. Therefore, if we want to create an array similar to our panelling, where the uprights are continuous between the top and the bottom, but there are several panels separately in between, then we need to split the array into two generators. The first one for the frame with verticals that extend the full height of the array and a second generator to fill the remaining gaps with the panels. Which brings me to my second point. Sometimes we need to create gaps in the array deliberately. To create spaces in the array, you can add a segment node, but not select any geometry. The fixed size parameter of these segments can then be adjusted to determine the size of the space, whereupon the empty segment will more or less behave exactly as though there was geometry present. We'll use this trick in this tutorial to make sure the two generators fit together as though they were one. So let's start by creating the frame. Create a new rail clone object in the scene and open the style editor. We need to import all the segments for this style. Instead of doing this one by one, you can save a little time and use the batch importer. To do this, first create a segment, then right click and select clone multiple. This option will allow you to create multiple segments from objects in the scene in just a couple of clicks. When the select objects window opens, pick RC panel RC horizontal frame, RC base, RC vertical frame and RC dado and then click clone. Five new segments will now be created, one for each selected object. If you want to you can delete the original. Now create a new A2S generator. Change the default mode to scale, this means it will scale a single segment from start to end or between corners and evenly segments if they are present. We'll drive the X size of this panelling with a spline and the Y size with a numeric value, so create a new spline node and wire it to the X spline input. Pick a test spline from the scene. To set the Y size of the array, for now we'll just go to the generator setting and increase the Y size value to 200cm. Later on in this tutorial we'll automatically calculate this height based on the number of panels in the array. Assign the RC base segment to the bottom input and the RC dado segment to the top input. And at this point, you'll notice that the array is being built on the XY plane. The array therefore needs to be rotated so that it's vertical. To do this, change the generator's X rotation property to 90 degrees. So now we have the top and the bottom, and we need to fill in the vertical sections and scale them so that they fill in in between. There isn't an automatic scaling mode for the Y axis, but we can create one with some simple maths. To find the height of the segment, we just need the Y size of the array and then subtract the height of the top and the bottom. We're going to control a segment's parameters with an expression, so first of all we need to add a transform operator. And this is because, in most cases, you can't wire an expression directly to a segment's parameters. Wire this transform operator to the left, right and X evenly inputs. And then wire the RC vertical frame segment to the transform node. 
right click on the transform operator and export the Y fixed size property. Don't forget to tick fixed size in the transform node settings also to enable it. We're going to control the height of this segment with an expression, so wire a new arithmetic operator to the Y fixed size parameter. But before we create the expression, we also need to know the height of the top and the bottom segments. To automatically derive these values from the geometry's bounding box, right click on each of the two segments and select export attributes size Y. While we're here, we'll also export the X size as well, since we'll need it later on in the style. Now wire the Y size of the dado and the base segment to the arithmetic operator. Select arithmetic node and change the mode to expression. Click edit expression and an editor window opens that will allow you to enter a custom expression and gives you access to a few variables that aren't available elsewhere. In this case, as mentioned, we want to find the Y size of the array and then minus the height of the top and bottom segments. Rail clone has a variable called Y spline length that returns the size of the array, and this works irrespective of whether or not the array's height is determined using a spline or with the Y size parameter as we're doing here. To create the expression, therefore, we write Y spline length minus input 1 minus input 2. Input 1 and input 2, in this case, refer to the values connected to the arithmetic node's inputs, which is the height of the top and the bottom segments. And so the expression is complete, but you'll notice there is still an issue. There's a vertical frame segment in the corners of the array, interrupting the top and bottom. Remember, we'd like the top and bottom to run right through to the ends. This is due to another one of the rules that Railclone uses to construct the array. If there's not a segment connected to the right bottom, left bottom, left top or left right corner inputs, then it uses the geometry in the left or right inputs instead. Fortunately, that makes the solution pretty easy. To get rid of those problematic corners, just create a new segment but don't select any geometry. I call these null segments, and they can be useful for all kinds of purposes. In this case, it is to trick the array into thinking geometry is present in the corner inputs. But later on, we'll see how null segments can be used to deliberately create spaces in the array. In that way, multiple generators can jigsaw together to make a seamless style. So attach the null array to all four corner inputs and that fixes the problem. And likewise, the X evenly division shouldn't cut through the top and bottom. So to prevent this, select the generator, go to rules and X evenly, and then turn off extend to side. When this is enabled, the segment attached to the X evenly input is also used in the bottom or the top row. Leave this unchecked and no evenly segments are used in the top and bottom rows. While you're here, change the mode to adaptive to make the spacing between evenly segments identical. Now the vertical segments will scale perfectly between the dado and the base. At the moment, the distance between the evenly segments is set manually. Ideally, the evenly distance will adjust automatically to the size of the panels. So to do this, select the generator and export the X evenly distance parameter. Now select the RC panel segment and export the X and the Y size attributes, while the RC panel segment's X size attribute to the generator's X evenly distance, and the frame is complete. To fill in the gaps, we'll use a second generator. The frame's already created, so we'll need to create gaps in this new array. To do this, we'll use more null segments. By wiring their fixed size properties to the attributes of the frame segments we've already used, we can create gaps in the array that are the exact same dimensions as the geometry. So clone the existing generator and remove all but the corner inputs. This saves a bit of setup time as most of the settings are identical. To fill in the gaps, we want to alternate between horizontal frames and then panels. To create a repeating pattern like this, you use a sequence operator. Wire this to the default input and change the mode so that the pattern increments on the Y axis. Wire the RC horizontal frame segment to the sequence operator's first input and then wire the RC panel segment to the second. And that's all the geometry you need for this generator. But as you can see, we need to make gaps for the existing frame. To do this, create a new segment, rename it null and export the X and Y fixed size parameters. Wire this segment to the left, right, and X evenly inputs. Wire the RC vertical frame segment's X size attribute to the null segment's X fixed size input. 
Because this null segment is now the same size as the frame, gaps are created in the array and the panels fit correctly on the X axis. So now let's take care of the Y axis. To create a gap for the base, clone the existing null segment and wire the RC base's X and Y size attributes to the X and Y fixed size parameters. Wire the null segment to the bottom side input and all the panels move into the correct position. Now do exactly the same thing for the RC dado segment. Clone another null segment and wire the RC dado X and Y size attributes to the X and Y fixed size parameters. Wire this null segment to the top size input and the two generators now interlock perfectly. At the moment the array size is set to an arbitrary value causing the topmost panel to be sliced. We'll change this so that the size of the array is automatically calculated to accommodate a specified number of panels. For both generators, export the Y size property, add a new numeric node and name it number of panels. This will allow you to control the number of panels from over here in the modify panel. Now create a new arithmetic node and change the mode to multiply. Wire the numeric node we just created and the RC panel segment's Y size attribute to its inputs. This is now calculating the size needed for any given number of panels. But that's not all we need. Next we'll calculate the amount of space that's required for those frame elements. There's always one less of these than there are panels. And to save creating loads of nodes to calculate simple maths, we'll create this using an expression. So create one new arithmetic node and wire the RC horizontal frame segment's Y size to the first input. Wire the number of panels node to the second input. Then select the arithmetic node and change the mode to expression. Open the expression editor and enter input 1 times open brackets input 2 minus 1 close brackets. This expression is multiplying the Y size of the horizontal framing segment by the number of panels less 1. Now we need to add the results of these two arithmetic nodes together along with the size of the base and the size of the dado to determine the overall height of the array. To do this, add another new arithmetic operator and wire the two existing arithmetic operators and the Y size of RC base and RC dado to its inputs. Wire the output of the new arithmetic operator to the Y size parameter of both generators. And now changing the number of panels will automatically update the height of the array, making sure that only whole panels are used. Also, because we're not using any hard coded values, changing the size of this panel will also cause the height to adjust correctly. Because we're scaling geometry, the textures can become stretched too. To fix that, one solution is to use Railclone's automatic box mapping feature to create new UVWs for a segment. In addition, for more variety, you can randomize the UVW offset and rotation so that each segment looks slightly different using just a single texture. So to turn on box mapping, select a segment, go to the Deform tab and turn on Mapping, Apply Box Mapping. Set a size for your box mapping, and if necessary, a rotation and map channel. And it's as easy as that. The geometry now has new UVW coordinates applied after it's been scaled, so that they're correct. Do the same thing for the other segments. When that's done, if you'd also like to randomize the UVW position, apply a UVW XForm operator between each segment and the generator. Then go to the Random tab and enter Minimum and Maximum values for Offset and, if desired, Rotation. It's worth mentioning at the moment that the UVW XForm operator only works with V-Ray. To use these features with other renderers, it's necessary to disable instancing by going to the Display rollout and unchecking Use Instancing Engine. Be aware that for styles that generate a lot of geometry, turning off instancing can negatively affect memory usage, but for something as simple as this, it should be OK. So in this tutorial, we demonstrated how to create a wainscoting style with verticals that stretch unbroken from the top to the bottom of the array. These techniques are not limited to panelling though. The same style can easily be used for other projects that have the same requirements at any scale. For example, if we use the same style but substitute the existing segments for these new ones, then we can create some kind of neoclassical facade with an adjustable number of floors. And this is possible because we created the original style using exported attributes combined with equations to set all the various parameters of the array. So as you can see, it's easy to just swap the geometry and everything updates automatically. It's always a good idea wherever possible to make Railclone styles so that they can be easily reused.
If you find alternative uses for this style, we'd love to see them on the forum. Otherwise, stay tuned for our next Tips and Tricks instalment and check out our other videos in the tutorials section of the website.